Hey guys, so today I'm just going to quickly run through the EXR playback uh, workflow for in camera VFX in Unreal Engine 5.1. So, to jump straight in, the first thing we need to do is check we've got the right plugins enabled. So, there's only two. The first one is Media Plate. If I can spell it right, there we go. Um, so, it's already enabled, which is great. And then we also need Image sequence uh, media player which is also enabled they both should be um, enabled by default in the in camera vfx template but it's always worth double checking so once we know they're both enabled and working we can come into window and come down to image media and then we want to come straight into the process exr now what we're going to do in this tab is we're going to feed it our default EXR image sequence and then from that it's going to output us the same sequence just enabled for mid mapping and tiling which will allow us to show each frame at the maximum resolution and also color depth so it's definitely a process worth doing so to start we want to just um, select our input path which is going to be our original um, EXR sequence um, and as you can see here I've just got EXR sequence and some example one of driving plates which we can just select open and then there's the output path which is going to be where Unreal places the new um, EXR sequence with the enabled mid mapping and tiling so again I've just got EXR sequence processed. I've been through this before, so it's already been done. Now, if we have a look through some of the options we have here, we have enable mid mapping, which needs to be done. Uh, we also have enable tiling, which needs to be done. We can leave the tiling size at this. Um, that should be perfectly fine for most, most workflows. Um, and then down here we have the number of threads we want to use in the processing. It will automatically detect um, how many threads your machine has. So I wouldn't worry about changing that. And then down here in debug, we have the ability to apply a tint to each um, mid map level. Um, this is more for sort of troubleshooting and if you wanted to visualize what the mid maps you're actually looking at. So we can leave that um, we can leave that open for now. I'm not going to process the images as I've done it already. Um, well, it'd save us some time. But basically, once you press process images, there should be a box down the bottom uh, right hand side, um, which will show you the progress of the EXR sequence being made. So once your EXR sequence has been made. And you can just close out of this tab. You can come down to your content browser. Um, and what we want to do is create a image media source. So I'm going to call this IMS underscore driving plate. And then we want to double click to open this. We want to select our sequence path, which um, Instead of the EXR sequence, we want to select the EXR sequence processed or wherever you told the engine to spit out your sequence. So if we go into here, just select the first one and open it. You're going to get a warning, um, which basically is um, saying is saying that if you were to package this project, um, the because this isn't within the project files itself, the project won't know what this media uh, reference is, which is not a, really an issue. You can move it into movies and package it with the project if you needed to. So the frame rate override, we want to set this to either what we're shooting at or what the media media source was recorded at, which ideally should be the same. So I know mine was 24 frames, so we can do that and then save and quit this. Now this is where it gets really cool. 
Um, we now have this image sequence asset, and what we can do is just pull this simply out into the scene, and as you can see, we get a black square, um, which you know isn't that interesting. But if we look at what we've got, maybe my face might be in the way. But in our outliner now, we have a IMS driving plates, which is our media plate asset. And then down here, we have all of these new settings, which we can play with. So the first thing we want to check is that the media source asset is the same as our asset we just made, which it is. So once we know that's correct, we can then open the current media and our drive-in plates should start to play. Now, as you can see, I've got a uh, LED stage uh, and display config in my level. We'll have a play with that in a minute, but right now let's just concentrate on our media plate. So um, the media plate can either be a plane, as we can see here, or we can also change it to a sphere for 360 videos, stitch videos, and have it, you know, um, scaled to the size of your volume. So my video isn't exactly free, uh, you know, stitched or anything. It's quite simple. But yeah, that's an option. And then we can also have custom meshes. So you could map this to any mesh you fancy. Um, but for now, I'm just going to stick to the plain option. Um, and what we have as well in this tab is a bunch of controls for the actual media. So obviously you have the stop, which would just stop the media from playing. You have then play, obviously, fast forwards, pause, play, and reverse. And so it's really nice to have some simple, straightforward controls to just record the playback. So that's really cool. Um, and then down here we have a couple more options like autoplay so that when we launch um, our end displays, the video will start playing automatically. Um, these controls can also be used in the multi-user session. Um, and then there's one other way to control the media itself. So we can do that by going into our cinematics making a level sequence and then calling this level sequence something like driving plates. So we'll call it that for now. Um, and if we open this and simply drag our, um, if we drag our media plate from the world outliner and just simply drop it straight into our sequencer, it will say, do you want to turn off autoplay? Um, which it asks that because if you were to have both on at the same time, it would um, provide a stuttery um, playback. So we're going to say yes. And now we have the ability to scrub through frame by frame of the video, have total control, and all of this again is usable during your multi user session. So, yeah, um, you can set your ins and outs to wherever you desire. Um, so that's gen the general um, setup of the media media plate itself. Um, we can quickly just align it with my stage um, to see um, how it will look. Say so my stage is a 4K canvas exactly. Um, it's kind of been designed that way. So if I set this to zero and say maybe six, yeah, that seems to work. Um, and I select my stage, you can see that uh, my stage is showing pretty much the exact um, thing as the uh, video plate. And then if we go to another new window, which is the uh, in-camera VFX window, uh, we can see, again, the projection. If I come over to Sequencer, go through it, tell it to loop. We can see roughly how that's then going to look on our LED wall. 
we can also uh, come into here, grab our incoming VFX camera. If we get some movement going around with the FOSS drum. So you can see the FOSS drum runs very nicely because of the mid maps and the tiling and it will always be in focus so like this so yeah that's a very quick run through of the new exr workflows um let me know if you guys have any questions or if you want to see something else in the new version of unreal engine 5 um but yeah thank you guys catch you soon